Euronet Plus Panorama is a weekly review of European news broadcast by our network of EU radio stations. Welcome back to our Panorama podcast. In this special episode, we're asking how the European election campaign is shaping up across the block with journalists from the Euronet Plus network from Estonia to France and Germany to Poland. We offer insights into the intensity and progress of the campaign leading up to next month's pivotal poll. The 2024 European elections, scheduled to take place on 6 to 9 June, are expected to have a significant impact across the EU and beyond. 400 million voters will decide on the shape and direction the European Union should take on a wide range of issues, including security, the economy and the environment. How are future MEPs mobilized across the EU and what issues are they campaigning on? And it seems that most Europeans are currently highlighting the need to prioritize security and geopolitical issues in the context of the war in Ukraine. And this is followed by economic issues. This is, for instance, the case in Estonia, where we start our tour with Timo Trave, a journalist at Kukuradio. The main talk, understandably in the light of the elections, is about security, war in Ukraine and assistance. The issues of the economy and the free market, which are a direct matter for the European Parliament to decide, are quite extraneous, if not non-existent. We continue our tour. And we are in Italy, where the most burning issues are immigration, the fight against terrorism and the environment, explains Gigi Donelli from Milan's Radio 24. Political parties confront each other on how to address stagnant economy growth, the management of migratory flows, the fight against crime and terrorism. The campaign also see a debate on national identity and Italy's role in Europe with some political forces promoting a more sovereign vision and others supporting greater commitment to the European integration. As for Italian PM Giorgia Meloni, she's using the European elections as a plebiscite on her work calling for Giorgia to be written on the ballot paper. Environmental issues, in particular the debate on the European Green Deal, the set of policy initiatives by the European Commission to make the European Union climate neutral by 2050, are pushed to the back burner by many member states. And France is one of them, says Romain Lostis, journalist at Radio. I have the feeling that environmental issues have been silenced. It's not that we don't think about them anymore, because climate extremes have been a problem all autumn and winter in the north of France, as well as on the West Atlantic coast, which has suffered from constant and exceptional storms this year. Nevertheless, in the news, in the speeches of the candidates and of our political leaders, I think that the issues that come up more often are, above all, those related to international security. According to a Eurobarometer survey, climate change is now a top priority only in Sweden. Whereas in 2019, it was the most important issue not only in Sweden, but also in Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. In Bulgaria, where European elections are held at the same time as local parliamentary elections, the six in the last three years from 2021, the debate mainly revolves around Bulgaria's position in the Western Balkans, such as the question of its Schengen status, which now covers air and sea borders, but not land borders, and EU enlargement to the region. Irina Nedeva from the Bulgarian National Radio reports. Everyone wants Bulgaria to be a full member of Schengen. The half-hearted Schengen, only for air and sea, is a reason for the Eurosceptic and anti-European extra-parliamentary parties and the parliamentary Vazrajdane revival of our right party to develop the thesis of Europe's double standards. EU enlargement to the Western Balkans is a consensus issue. On the issue of negotiations with North Macedonia, there are differences in the interpretation of the role of the Bulgarian veto and the EU's efforts. Several forecasts suggest that these elections will see a significant shift to the right. This is expected to be the case in France, where the polls point to a potential victory from Jordan Bardella, the leader of the right-wing Rassemblement National explains Romain Lustis. 
Autour de moi, les Françaises et les Français. The French people around me know Jourdain Bardella well because he's been on the national scene for some time now. The president of Rassemblement National is the head of the list for the European elections, and his far-right party is currently the clear winner in the polls of voting intentions for European elections. Dans les sondages d'intention de vote aux élections européennes. In the case of Bulgaria, Vazdrajdani, the country's largest right-wing political party, is aiming for representation in the European Parliament, says Irina. Of the parties represented in the Bulgarian Parliament so far, the only one that relies on articulate anti-European rhetoric is the pro-Russian nationalist party, Vazdrajdane. They want to enter the EP with, and I quote, the mission to liberate Europe from the EU. Criticism of what they call Brussels' obedient ruling elites and the topic of sovereignty are central to this openly Eurosceptic and anti-European party, which does not hide its pro-Russian bias and opposes support for Ukraine. However, while polls indicate that white-wing parties are gaining support across the European Union, the question remains as to how far this support will translate into actual votes. Indeed, in Poland, journalist Artur Panacuk of Polskie Radio notes that recent surveys showed that voters for the Liberal, pro-European civic coalition led by Donald Tusk, appeared to be more mobilized than those supporting its right-wing rival, Law and Justice. Poles will vote for their candidates for the European Parliament on the 9th of June. Local commentators point out that in contrast to the pan-European trend of mobilization of the electorate of anti-European parties, Poland is a notable exception. Two months before the elections, voters allied to the Donald Tusk-led civic coalition are clearly more mobilized had elections than voters of their anti-European rival, the Law and Justice Party. According to a recent poll, 73% of civic coalition voters, compared to 61% of Law and Justice voters, say they will definitely vote in the European Parliament elections. Thus, Poland stands out as a country where pro-European sentiment is gaining momentum. Not only are Poles more willing to vote for pre-European representatives, they are more inclined to participate in these elections overall compared to the latest polls from 2019. This is a trend that can be seen in most European countries. According to the Eurobarometer survey, 71% of Europeans say they are likely to vote in these elections, an increase of more than 15% compared to five years ago. By lowering the voting age to 16, some countries, such as Germany and Belgium, try to mobilize their younger generations, who are generally less keen on voting than their older compatriots. Some 4.8 million young Germans will now be able to vote for the first time. The decision could lead to an increase in the proportion of young voters, says Alina Klass, a trainee with our colleagues at IMS in Germany. Here in Germany, we don't have compulsory voting, but I believe that more and more young people are deciding to vote these days, because the election results ultimately show what kind of Europe we want to live in. Now, people age 16 and over can vote. That's why I also believe that the number of young citizens who cast their votes will definitely increase. The survey also suggests that Europeans are increasingly willing to vote in this year's European elections. However, responses still vary from country to country, with member states such as France falling below the EU average. In Estonia, Timo notes the low investment in the European campaign, with the exception of social media. The European Parliament elections are taking place in Estonia for the fifth time, and I'm going to say from a subjective feeling that in terms of campaigning and information, this is probably the leanest pre-election period ever. I am referring here to the physical public space, which is practically empty of posters of political parties and candidates. There is also no mass advertising on television and radio. On social media, the approach to the European elections is better felt. There are at least a dozen candidates who have been campaigning on social media, posting pictures, messages and appeals at an extraordinary and sometimes even aggressive pace. The campaign has also been slow to take off in France, says Romain Lostis. 
à Strasbourg aussi, dans l'espace public, également en ligne. On voit pas mal de communication qui a été faite récemment. In Strasbourg, there has been a lot of communication, both in the public space and online, to encourage people to check their electoral registrations. However, what I've noticed so far is that, apart from my fellow journalists or people working in a professional sector related to European affairs, the subject is still not much in the conversations. Des élections européennes semblent encore peu présents dans les conversations. As in Bulgaria, local elections are being held concurrently in several countries. In such instances, European-level issues such as the Green Deal or the Digital Agenda are even less of a prominent focus of the debate, with regional topics dominating the campaigns. And this is the case of Lithuania, where the EU campaign is overshadowed by the presidential elections. Our colleague Oshwa Yugorskaite at Genio Radies reports. The presidential election campaign is currently underway in Lithuania. It is completely overshadowing the upcoming European Parliament elections. You will not see any posters for those elections on the streets here, although the joke is that foreigners visiting Vilnius would not realize that there are also presidential elections. It is likely that once the latter is over, it will become clearer who is seeking seats in the European Parliament and why. However, turnout is already expected to be low, despite a Eurobarometer poll at the end of last year showing that two-thirds plan to vote. I have spoken to colleagues who have said that it will be a good thing if at least one-third turn out. The situation is similar in Romania, where the European elections are being held on the same day as the local elections, a situation that could lead to confusion, says journalist Florin Orban of Radio Romania. Under these conditions, it is possible that on the day of the vote there will be a bit of confusion. Obviously, in relation to the everyday concerns of voters, local elections are more important and the stake of the electoral campaign is oriented towards local issues. Few European topics are heard in the public debate, especially due to the fact that many of the candidates for the European Parliament are campaigning at the municipal and county level to support candidates for the positions of mayor in important cities and for presidents of county councils. From security concerns to climate change and economic debates, these elections are crucial for the EU. Their results potentially driven by increased voter engagement and possible shifts in political preferences should reflect the priorities of European citizens and set the course for the future of the Union. In this episode was prepared by Veronika Snoy. Thanks for listening. Make sure to come back Friday for a new episode of our Panorama podcast.